Hello, welcome and thank you for joining us for the August episode of Chang Reaction. I'm Mary Pruden, the director of the National Keratoconus Foundation. We are a patient advocacy program located in Southern California at the University of California, Irvine. NKCF provides information to patients and their families and raises public awareness of this cornea disease. We invite you to visit our website nkcf.org and sign up for our newsletter and register for our bi-monthly webinars. We also post our news to Instagram and Facebook. This is Chang Reaction, our Ask the Expert podcast. Our partner for this is Dr. Clark Chang, a noted keratoconus expert and a friend of NKCF. We often receive questions about life with keratoconus and Dr. Chang has offered to share his advice on these questions. We tape them, his answers, and archive the episodes for the public. We hope you'll learn something interesting by listening to them. Dr. Chang is currently Director of Specialty Contact Lens on the Cornea Service at Will's Eye Hospital in Philadelphia. He's also a member of the Medical Affairs Team at Glaucos. That's the company that makes the FDA-approved cross-linking equipment. He is a graduate of the Pennsylvania College of Optometry and a fellow of the American Academy of Optometry. He was also the NKCF top doc in 2020. Hello, Dr. Chang. What's new? Hi, Mary. You're talking, you mean outside of my um, experiment <laughs> with my new hair, <laughs> which I may come to regret a little bit later, but uh, <laughs> I don't think that's what you meant, but uh, Let's let's talk about something that's more uh, our listener may be a little more interested in um, outside of my fail hair experiment. Um, I just finished writing an article for uh, AOA magazine called Focus, and uh, although that's circulated within the uh, my optometric colleagues, I know that the article when um, printed when in press will also be available online. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, I'll be able to. Um, I share the link and for any of our listeners who may be interested in listening to or reading uh, something that uh, has to do with keratoconus research and in kind of, you know new keratoconus content lenses and what they are uh, and as well as in cross-linking. So that would hopefully be something that I'd be able to uh, make available through NKCF once I have that information. That sounds great. Let's get started. Let's do it. Okay. The first qu first question we got from Betty in Michigan. Betty tells us she's been wearing scleral lenses for more than five years. She says she gets a lots of film or a protein buildup on her lenses. Betty writes us, I clean my contacts five or six times a day and then reinsert them. I blink and it comes right back. What am I doing wrong? Is Betty doing something wrong? Is it normal to take your lenses out several times during the day? Right. Um, you know, and I will have to tell you that that's a, a rather common inquiry that I get from patients who are seeing me the, for the very first time because they may have similar struggles like Betty. So Betty, definitely a great question because a lot of people are um, have the same questions as you and, and want to get the answer. So let's first talk about, I don't think that necessarily you're doing anything wrong, but let's talk about where potentially insufficiencies can occur in uh, lens handling and lens fitting and ocular hygiene that may actually produce these type of symptoms. And so in order to talk about that, we first need to know when something's not working, you know, how does it usually work? And in order to know why, why it's not performing the way it should be. So a scleral lens. A scleral lens has gained popularity in the last uh, five to 10 years because it has a lot of clinical applications. And for one thing, it's usually known to be a lot more comfortable than the old hard uh, lens or what we use, what we currently call uh, gas permeable lenses or corneal GPs. And the reason that a scleral lens is more comfortable is because it, the edge of the lens sits on the, it's, uh, sits on the white part of your eye called sclera. And so, the, the your scleral tissue is less sensitive than your cornea, which is the clear tissue in front of your iris. And so a smaller lens can tend to be uh, leave a little more um, impression or uh, a little more 
pressure onto your sensitive tissue, uh, your corneal tissue that's more sensitive. And that's the reason why a scleral lens is, is, um, can be more comfortable for a lot of patients. But in exchange, because the shape of the white part of the eye can also be very uneven. So if you think about the fact that in order for a lens to be very comfortable and not collect extra debris, for example, that either the surface of the eye produces or allow ex external debris to kind of enter the lens, it has to form a very seamless seal, if you would, the edge and the white part of the eye. So there are actually two common reasons, if you sort of listen to what I just described, two common reasons for why patients would have to take their lenses off and on uh, multiple times a day. Number one, you could actually have that debris deposition that I'm talking about on the front part of the lens, not the back. Um, and so that's one. And mechanism number two, it could actually be debris entering the back of the lens where you put fluid in. So that fluid filled chamber underneath the scleral lens eventually gets too misty, if you will, for you to see through. And many patients also have then to take the lens out, you know, refresh the solution, clean the lens, refresh the solution, and put the lens back on the eye. So those are two common reasons that when this kind of symptoms occur, um, can be explained by uh, the, the two common mechanisms that I just talked about. Um, but both of them also, before I tell you what you can do, uh, both of that mechanism, however, because they overlap and give you similar symptoms of what you said with regard to foggy vision, have to remove and clean and reinsert the lens a few times uh, throughout the day. Of course, that's not our hope is for most patients to not have to do that if they're, um, if possible, from fitting changes or alteration of their tear chemistry, because dryness can cause a lot of debris deposition occurring from um, your own tear. So because of that, obviously, if we could, if there's something that we could fix on the surface of the eye from whether fitting or managing your tear chemistry or your dryness symptom, that's obviously something that should be looked at with your doctor. Um, so make sure that you still, you know, go and see your doctor to figure out if it's happening on the front surface or if it's happening underneath the lens and exactly what the root cause is and discuss the best approach for your exact individualized situation. But let's talk about some of the general approaches that I usually will recommend to my patients because based on your symptoms, based on what you said with regard to I blink and that film seems to come back, it is probably more likely that you are correct in that the deposition is occurring on the front surface of the lens. So the, that's this focus right now on that mechanism number one of collecting deposit on the front surface of the lens, um, which can, uh, which more likely correspond to your symptom. So if you have heavy deposit load on the front surface of your content lens, I generally recommend following a few approaches for my patients. And I'm giving you a larger spectrum of options so that you could try each of them out one by one. Um, because I haven't seen you in front of me with the lens, I can't really tell you exactly what the root cause is and therefore, you know, approach number two and three is the best for you. But let's give you the general range of what I usually tell my patients. So. Number one, if you are, because a lot of people are used to wearing um, hard lenses from many decades ago, which we don't really fit anymore, and they used to, they're used to uh, using tap water to uh, clean or rinse um, the cleaner of the lenses, but tap water can actually break or um, reverse the polarity of the lens uh, of the lens surface, making it more likely to um, be uh, more likely to collect deposits. And also, depending on the water quality of your local area, it could also leave hard water deposit on the surface of the lens. And once you have deposit on the surface of the lens, the it's more likely to then attract other deposits. And that's the reason why I will I don't let any of my patients use tap water on any type of content lenses. Uh, not scleral lens, not corneal GP, definitely not soft lenses, and definitely not hybrid lenses. Um, so make sure that if that's what you're doing to probably time to get a new lens because the surface is damaged enough um, that most likely all the other approaches that I'm going to tell you now isn't going to work. But number one, definitely stop using tap water. That's what you're doing. Number two, 
uh, some patients they just they have enough uh, uh, they have challenges putting lens on and taking lens out so once they take the lens out all that they want to do is put it in a storage case and, and kind of soak and disinfect they don't really they skip the cleaning stage so i would recommend that because one like i said once you have deposit on the surface of the lens whether it's lipid or protein from your own tear um, it's more likely to continue to retract more. So if you don't clean off that deposit that's already on the lens, when you take the lens out, if you don't take it off fully, um, you don't remove that layer of deposit fully, it will just continue to come back. So I would have patient use a stronger um, cleaner if, they do, if the one that they're right now using is not sufficient. So I typically start my patient using uh, an over-the-counter cleaner that they can get called Unique pH. Um, and uh, they, you know, there are other more abrasive cleaners that may change the surface quality of the lens. So it depends on what lens material um, and that you have. And again, I don't have that information. So something like a Boston Sim Plus or Unique PH can is more compatible with any with a general lens type. So I usually make sure they use something like that to cling and use their finger and rub the surface of the lens really well and rinse it off. It's very similar to doing your dishes. If you just you just use a stream of water to rinse, you're not going to get a whole lot of food particle off the plate. You have to use a sponge to scrub, right? So in this case, you're going to use your finger to very gently scrub the front and the back surface when you take the lens out. Use an appropriate cleaner. If you don't have one, at least use Unique pH, like I said right now, uh, or Boston Sim Plus. Um, Boston Solution has an advanced cleaner system that has a, is an alcohol base, so it cleans, it's a little more abrasive, so it cleans a little bit better, but again, like I said, I need to know exactly what kind of material the lens is made of and whether or not it has a coating that I'm gonna um, offer you as another option because the abrasive agents can rub up some of the coating surface treatments, so you also have to know that. But a, a cleaner with uh, gentle rubbing can generally help. Number three, soak your lens in uh, after you rub and rinse really well. Um, make sure that you soak your lens in a disinfecting agent that has more conditioning power um, so that it will form a protective layer, if you would, on the surface of the lens. So the next day or the next time when you put the lens on the eye, it, slightly, it is slightly more deposit resistant. Um, so again, UniPH is a very good one that I have found for most of my patients. Uh, clear, a, hydrogen, uh, a hydrogen peroxide system over the counter called Clear Care. Um, I have found rubbing with that and soaking with that can also preserve the integrity of the lens, although it doesn't really further condition your lens like a unique pH, but most of my patients are using one of those two uh, systems. They, they tend to do quite well. And if that doesn't work, then I recommend adding an enzyme cleaner, um, such as the Boston Liquid Enzymatic Cleaner that you can get over the counter. Um, it again, a little bit more abrasive. So if there's some sort of surface special treatment that was done to the surface of your lens, which sounds to me like it's not there anymore, because if it is, either it was, it was never put on your lens or it's already worn off, that could be the reason you're getting that kind of deposit frequency. So it likely is okay now for you to use a more abrasive uh, cleaner like the Boston Advance that I talked about and adding an enzyme cleaner like the Boston Liquid Enzymatic Cleaner. It's a uh, one that you could use weekly. Um, I sometimes have patients at the, if they're getting a lot of deposit to use slightly more often just to test out whether or not Maybe they just have so much deposit from their own tear because the eyes are so dry that maybe they do need to use it more like every other day or every day in terms of the enzyme cleaner. So I would certainly also consider that. And as I was referring to, if you were, if the lens is old or maybe your lens never had an extra special treatment put on the surface of the lens to coat the lens, then it may be it's time to, re, to purchase a new lens. Start with a fresh surface that's sterilized and then have your eye doctor uh, request to have a special uh, coating treatment put on the surface of the lens that coats the lens really well. And then that is very compatible with the clear care solution and the uni pH solution that I talked about. I find that to be one of the best option to resist deposit for my contact lens patients who used to have to take the lenses off multiple times. Um, those are sort of short-term treatments, something that could work right away. 
However, I refer to the fact that a lot of times those deposits are basically particulates or precipitated molecule from your tear because your tear, your own eyes are dry. So with poor tear chemistry, you're more likely to have deposits if we don't reverse that course or at least maintain, try to restore your the health of your tear film. So go to, you know, make sure again, ask your eye doctors if you have any type of dry issue. There are many different sources that could exacerbate your dry eye. And those can be um, medically treated, whether with just as simple as uh, medication eye drops or rewetting drops that you could use over your contact lenses. Um, and and uh, as well as doing warm compress to produce more oil uh, from the glands situated in your tear, which can coat the lens uh, well, as um, which can also help coating of the lens. Um, so or your tear film. So again, speak to your eye doctors about whether or not you require long-term treatment to alter or improve your tear chemistry. Can ultimately be something that will help you once you get short-term fix. Um, into your uh, lens handling that I've talked about uh, prior to the medication. So Betty, I hope that answers your question and uh, definitely try them one by one and see which one is most helpful for you. Uh, thanks, Dr. Chang. I, I, that was really helpful. But I, I, I guess uh, one question that comes to my mind is when Betty or anybody goes in and sees their eye doctor, can you tell if the um, the film is a result of sort of inadequate cleaning or deposits from the patient's own tear film? Does it look different? It would, you cannot tell whether, you can only tell the location of the deposit uh, and the type of deposit. So meaning I could see if the deposit is on the front surface of the eye or the back surface where maybe the fitting change, we need to make more of a seal around the edge so that uh, the debris doesn't enter underneath the uh, lens and because of the uneven shape of the white part of the eye, the sclera. So you could tell the location, you could tell what type of deposit, whether it's a lot of mucin that's being produced by the eye, whether it's excessive lipid or protein molecule, and that may then um, help the eye doctors to zoom in to what medication or what dry therapy you need um, more that it can be more helpful than others. So that's the reason why it's still important to, even though I've given you general approaches, something that would be a quicker um, resolution would be figuring out exactly what lay, what location the deposit is happening and what type of deposit is it a, does it require a fitting change or does it require a tier chemistry improvement? Okay, that's real, that's, that, that clears up a lot of, uh, questions that we do get from people um, uh, because this, like you say, it's it's sort of a, for some people, it's a constant problem and they just mm -hmm. uh, never get a, a clean um, uh, view out their lenses. So here's a, a question that um, may be interesting uh, and may actually relate back to what you were just talking about. So uh, this is from Ron and he said, what is hydropeg? Could it help me with my contact lens experience? Is hydropeg something that contact lens wearers should know about? Yeah, you know, Rob, you're absolutely reading my mind. <laughs> uh, so yes, you remember the code, the, the, I, the new lens um, with added coating treatment that I was just talking about in the last question is exactly hydropeg. Um, so hydropeg is the new coating technology that can be added on to new lenses when the when new lenses are being made, and uh, it can be hybrid lenses, could be scleral lenses, could be cor you know corneal GP. It's not just scleral. Um, so, and most of the custom lenses can have hydropeg added on to it. And what it is, it's um, it's a, a it's chemical name, or at least its main ingredient in this hydropeg coating technology is um, polyethylene glycol or PEG. And what it is, is it's a, it's a chemical um, surface treatment that attracts water molecule. And so it makes the lens look um, shinier. And when you touch the lens, it feels a little more slippery because it is, um, it's a high water polymer coating that um, can 
like I said, can be applied to different type of custom lenses. And it has the ability to be compatible with um, fluid or your tear and continue to attract your, um, continue to keep up the surface wettability so that it doesn't repel uh, fluid or your tear. Therefore, your tear molecule accumulate on the surface of the lens much better. So that means that you're going to be more deposit resistant. So a lot of times, even for my dry patients, so whether your eyes are dry or you just have other issues that leads to more you know, deposit on the surface of the lens, I find that adding the hydro pack can be really helpful for a lot of my patients, especially when you combine with dry treatment, if they need such treatment. So this coating, and the reason why this isn't as big of an issue to like um, hard lenses or lenses that I've mentioned are sort of, you know, outdated. Um, the reason that it's not as much of a, it's not as much of an issue then, but it is more of an issue now with a lot of the modern contact lenses is that when we, we, make, when we make the lenses more breathable nowadays, material science have improved. So we like to use materials that are more oxygen friendly. So the oxygen can get through the lens and get to your eye, which is good for the health of the eye, but the more breathable these material, these newer generation materials, they tend to be more hydrophobic or, or not water loving. So therefore they naturally more repel water or tear fluid, and they're more like to collect your, you know, deposit like your mucin or your lipid or protein from uh, to adhere on the surface of the, of the new modern material. So this new coating basically hides it. It covers up all those hydrophobic molecules of the, the more breathable material so that the wettability is better. It doesn't have that sort of wax on the car and it, you, you know, and then water molecule kind of, kind of beats up on the surface of the car because wax is repelling water. It's similar to, to that when you don't have the hydro pack in the very breathable modern day material. And therefore that hydro pack in my mind whether it's dry patient or it's just general comfort issue can, can improve. The slight limitation is that the hydropad coating, because it's relatively new, so it hasn't been tested with a lot of over-the-counter cleaning systems. So the maker of the hydropad basically have, uh, have um, tested only clear following solutions, clear care, unique pH, tangible clean, and Boston Thin Plus. Those are the only four cleaners that are approved to be used if your lens is hydropack. And therefore, it kind of limits your uh, solution system, you, you know, not generic. And, and however, these four are over the counter uh, and easy to get. And I just want to say it again, they're clear care, unique pH, tangible clean, and Boston Thin Plus. All things that are easy to find, but the limitation of having that coating is that um, number one, you have to use approved uh, system to for the upkeep of the coating. And number two, it still does what the wear and tear will thin out the coating. So you will eventually have to replace the lens, uh, although they now have a home repair kit that you can purchase from the maker of the coating. And um, it's called Tangible Boost. And it basically on a monthly, use it once a month, and it will repair the coating for you as much as possible. Uh, so that it restores the comfort and the um, ability to resist uh, deposit on the lens. So I find it to be a very helpful feature to add, and I recommend it to all my patients. Well, that's interesting. I think we ha had an article on um, Tangible Boost and, uh, and HydroPeg in one of our recent newsletters. So if people want to read more, they should uh, look at our newsletters or go to the uh, Tangible Science um, website. I, um, but uh, So a patient can ask for that and then uh, it's just added to the prescriptive. Um, it, it can only happen when a new pair of lenses is being made though, right? You couldn't bring in your old lenses. Okay. Okay. That's great. Um, well, so let's get the best result when it's brand new. Uh, the, sure. the, the outcome's not as guaranteed if it's the lens already has surface wear and tear and then you try to put a coating on it. It doesn't, doesn't work as well. Okay, um, let's go back to our last question for this month. Oh yes, we got a question from a stressed out, frazzled patient and she called NKCF and left us this phone message. She said, I left my contacts out last night. 
without placing them in the cleaning solution. Is that a fatal mistake? Are my contacts ruined? She wonders if the contacts are gonna change shape if they dry out. What would you tell somebody who yeah. called you in a panic? <laughs> right, right. And, and yes, they can, if you're for, for our patients with keratoconus or other corneal condition that cannot function with regular glasses or anything else, it indeed is an is, is it's an urgent situation that occurs. And so I, I completely understand the panic, but but don't panic yet. Let's that's, that's kind of dissect the, um, the issue here. Two things that can happen when your custom gas permeable lenses or scleral lenses are left out, um, you know, to dry out on their own. And uh, in, I'm, I'm actually, most people immediately think, oh, I, I've caused damage to the lens. And while that is a, a, a concern, which I'm gonna talk about, my initial concern is whether or not this is a recurring situation um, which may then increase the risk of infection for the contact lens wear. Why do I say that? Because when it's left out and you realize that in the morning, you still have to continue with your day, then most people don't have enough time to disinfect their lenses uh, enough to have the lens remain sufficiently, sufficiently clean for the next day, right? And so if you do this very often, then you're more likely to, the risk of infection can increase. So hopefully this isn't a common occurrence. Uh, and most current lens system over the counter, if you read carefully, they require you anywhere from four to even six plus hours of disinfection time in soaking in the solution for to get the best disinfection result to lower the most amount of bacteria to a safe level for the lens to wear. So I would number one recommend don't put the lens back on right away. Make sure that you do still follow that proper cleaning cycle time that's required to get the best disinfection. And uh, obviously don't, you know, try not to have it happen as often as possible. Another reason to not have it uh, to be a recurring, to not have it as a recurring situation is indeed what um, this patient just said, and that is repeated attack to the lens when you put your lens through a, de a hydration and dehydration cycle, meaning it was, um, the surface was coated with your tear or soaked in solution so it's wet, and you left it out somewhere, you know, hopefully a clean surface, and then it dries out, uh, because the uh, moisture molecule evaporate away from the lens, that cycle of uh, moisture and evaporation, moisture and evaporation can eventually warp the lens. And when the surface of the lens warps, because each of them have a shape that's designed to give you your, their best vision. So as the lens shape of the lens changes, it then we call it warpage. It can lose its intended fit um, or even optical power. So your comfort and vision can be affected over the long run. Um, so again, once or twice, as long as you disinfect in the approved solution prescribed by your eye doctor, in my mind, it, uh, with a scleral lens or a corneal GP, that's likely okay, as long as you're not, you know, you're reducing your own risk of infection. But the, in the long haul, it can cause lens warpage, which is permanent and cannot be reversed. Um, and therefore that physical damage doesn't occur usually until it's, a, um, until it's accumulated enough episodes. Um, so for the best lens care, make sure that you always do put the lens back in your recommended uh, disinfecting and conditioning agent and uh, follow the amount of time that's needed to get the full disinfection. Um, but if you, you know, including if you're taking a nap or going swimming, anytime that you can contaminate your lens, you should take the lens out. However, for some lens solutions, I definitely can understand why patients resist taking it out during the day, even if they're just taking a short break, because some solutions like a clear care will require you to definitely have six hours of neutralization time in the solution. Um, and therefore, patients who are using something like a hydrogen peroxide system, like a clear care, are more wary about taking the lens out because they don't know what to do for like half an hour, an hour, what to do with the lens. There are, uh, so talk to your eye doctor, there are other solutions like the uni pH I told you about um, that can be used as a, or the tangible clean that I told you about. Those can actually be used as a temporary storage solution. Even though you don't get the full disinfection, you're at least still partially disinfecting the lens and it's not drying out. It's sitting in a good, um, 
cleaning and conditioning agent. So that can be used as a temporary storage before you fully disinfect at night when you take the lens out. So follow those steps and talk to your eye doctors. That way you can maintain the tip top shape of your contact lenses and see the best and be the most comfortable that you can be. That's so Mary, great. I hope that answers the question. It does. It's good news for my poor, my poor patient who thinks her uh, contacts are gonna uh, change shape. So thanks again for answering some great questions this month. Um, so um, next month, look for another Chang reaction and more answers to questions all about things uh, keratoconus. If anybody listening to this podcast has a question that they would like answered in a future episode, go to the NKCF website and under the For Patients tab, you'll find Ask the Expert slash Chang Reaction. You can post your, your uh, question there and we'll uh, it's all private. It comes directly to NKCF and we will try to answer it during an upcoming uh, episode. Uh, finally, NKCF operates uh, with the support of friends and donors. If you feel the urge to support us, we love that. We, you can make a much appreciated online gift. In closing, I wanna thank Dr. Chang for taking the time out of his schedule so I also want to thank everybody then in, uh, in this case, I, I really enjoy answering your questions and uh, whether it's content lens re related or other issue with regard to keratoconus, I really enjoy the, you, you know, just being able to have this general communication with all of you out there. So please continue to send in your questions. Love to answer them. Mary already told you where to look, but if you go to NKCF website, ask, an, ask the expert, you'll find it. Until then, I hope, I'm looking forward to getting more questions and answering them for you next month. I will see you then, unless Mary or uh, Taylor have any other departing remarks or comments that you guys want to give. I think we're okay. Thank you. Bye, everybody.